Hello everyone, and welcome back to Translation Born, the show where we talk about translation, Bloodborne, and the translation of Bloodborne. This time, we're going to start off right away with an item description that we picked up off the body of that hunter we defeated at the end of the last episode. Bone Marrow Ash. Additional medium that strengthens Quicksilver bullets. According to the workshop, this is a special bone marrow ash collected from Hemwick Charnel Lane. Invaluable to hunters with weak blood tinge who require the use of stronger firearms. Now, there are a few things I'd like to note about this translation. So let's go ahead and read through it again, this time comparing a more literal version to the official one that's on screen. An additive catalyst that increases the power of mercury bullets. This is said to be a special bone marrow ash apparently produced in Graveyard Town, Hemwick. Especially for hunters whose quality of blood is less than impressive, this is a valuable method of increasing the power of their shots. And really, if you set aside the issue of some game-related terms, there's only one thing that I'd want to discuss here. Namely, that the official version has the phrase, according to the workshop, whereas the Japanese merely indicates outside information. It's understandable that the translators would want to specify a source for this information, and the workshop is a reasonable one, but the Japanese doesn't actually indicate that. I don't think this is too much of a leap to make, but it's especially interesting to me because up until this point we've seen a number of occasions in which the official version has been more vague than the Japanese, and this time it's less so. But anyway, the things that I really wanted to talk about here are the game-related terms that I mentioned before. The first of these we've actually seen before, it's the term for Quicksilver Bullets. The characters used for the Japanese are on screen, and I'm going to break those down so that we can get a better idea for what makes up that term. The first two characters actually form a word in Japanese, suigin, which is mercury. That final character, dan or tama, in this case is used to refer to bullets. So quite literally, these are mercury bullets. Given the setting of Bloodborne, though, just calling them Mercury Bullets would probably come across as a little bit dull. The use of the term Quicksilver instead, I think, was an inspired choice, especially considering the connection with alchemy. Still, all things considered, that's a relatively straightforward change. The next term I'd like to discuss, on the other hand, involves a little bit more of a transformation. The Japanese in this case is actually something of a phrase. Chinoseishitsu, and it translates more literally to quality or nature of blood. The official translation here is blood tinge. Crucially, this is one of the six main stats that you have in Bloodborne, the others being vitality, endurance, strength, skill, and arcane. And I bring this up not just to emphasize the importance of the term, but also to consider the fact that these probably were all grouped together in a category in terms of the game's text. In other words, they probably got their own set of character limitations, and I imagine that those limitations were pretty strict. Blood Tinge is the longest at 10 characters, and I would guess that's probably the maximum. And if that's true, then a translation like Blood Quality would definitely be too long. Even as one word, Blood Quality comes in at 12 characters. As for Blood Tinge's ability to get across the right idea, in terms of the association that the word Tinge has with color, I feel like you can make a case for it. If you say that one sample of blood has superior color to another, you give the impression that it has better properties or quality. And of course, when you talk about color and blood, there's the reference to the idea of people of noble birth having blue blood. Given what I believe was a fairly strict set of character limitations, I feel like this is probably the best translation they could have come up with. Anyway, that should about do it for the discussion of Bone Marrow Ash. Let's talk about this new item we just got. Beast Blood Pellet. Large medicinal pellets, supposedly formed of coagulated beast blood, banned by the healing church due to their unclear origin, grants a spurt of beasthood ripping apart the flesh of one's enemies and being rained upon by their splattering blood invigorates one's sense of beasthood, feeding strength and euphoric feeling alike. So this is an interesting item, and it brings with it an interesting challenge for translation as well. But before we get to that, let's start out with another comparison between a more literal translation and the official one. Giant pellets of medicine said to be hardened beast blood. Their origin unknown, the healing church treats them as taboo, refusing association with them. Whoever takes them is temporarily guided to a beastly nature. This beastly nature is heightened through attacks, as flesh is torn apart and blood spatters backwards. 
Continuing on like this most likely grants the user increased strength and pleasure. And as you can see, a lot of that is pretty straightforward. Where the challenge really comes in though is in the use of some specific game-related terms as if they weren't game-related at all. Because though it may not sound like it, this item is introducing a new game mechanic. I'm going to be using these items when we get to the boss of this area to demonstrate the mechanic, but basically the way it works is you take one of these items and you enter a new mode. When you're in this beast mode, every time you land an attack, it helps increase your attack power while at the same time lowering your defense. With that in mind then, let me reread and emphasize some of my more literal translation here. Whoever takes these beast blood pellets is temporarily guided to a beastly nature. This beastly nature is heightened through attacks. Continuing on like this most likely grants the user increased strength and pleasure. So as you can see, this item description is clearly telling you how this item works, at least to some extent. At the same time though, it's playing around with the literal meanings of the words that it's using. Note that I left out a part of the sentence from my more literal translation, as flesh is torn apart and blood spatters backwards. What all this means is that it's very easy to lose track of the mechanical information of how this item works in terms of the game, and instead focus on the description of the horrific acts that the hunter commits when they're in this beastly nature. So with that issue in mind, let's take another look at the corresponding part of the official translation. Grants a spurt of beasthood. Ripping apart the flesh of one's enemies and being rained upon by their splattering blood invigorates one's sense of beasthood, feeding strength and euphoric feeling alike. Now, thinking back over that, I think they've done an excellent job in one aspect of the translation. The phrasing is extremely evocative. It draws you in and lets you know what it would feel like to experience that kind of bloodlust. It also helps to bring out that dark nature behind beasthood, and to some extent, visceral attacks as well. Even the naming of the stat, Beasthood, as opposed to Beastly Nature, I think does a good job of getting at that. The problem, I would say, is that they're so successful at drawing all of this out that I feel like the mechanical aspect of the translation suffers. When you read about how ripping apart the flesh of one's enemies and being blamed upon by their splattering blood invigorates your sense of Beasthood, when you read about how this feeds your strength and euphoric feeling, it doesn't make you think in terms of game mechanics. You're just not very likely to read all that and think of it in the sense of, oh, when I have this spurt of beasthood, I can attack enemies and it will increase my sense of beasthood and that will make me stronger. So as much as I love the phrasing of the official translation, and as evocative as I think it is, ultimately I feel like they could have been a bit more clear here. That having been said, this issue of clarity still comes up in the original Japanese, and I think that's reflected pretty well in the more literal translation that I've provided. To a certain extent, I feel like this was bound to be an issue. But in any case, now that we've climbed all the way back up here, let's talk a little bit more with Alfred. Oh, good to see you safe. Now, let's think up something to discuss. Just tell me what piques your interest. What do you know about the Healing Church? As you know, the Healing Church is the fountainhead of blood healing. Well, I'm a simple hunter, quite unfamiliar with the ins and outs of the institution. But I have heard that the holy medium of blood healing is venerated in the main cathedral. And that counselors of the old church reside in the high stratum of the cathedral ward. If you seek blood healing, and the church is willing, you should pay them a visit. All right, I'll think about it. See you later, Alfred. I bid you farewell. It has been a pleasure. May the good blood guide your way. All right, this is an important dialogue with a lot of interesting points to touch on, so let's go straight into a comparison. As you know, the Healing Church is responsible for the salvation of blood. While mere hunters, such as myself, are not very familiar with the internal workings of the church, I have heard that the Holy Body, source of the salvation of blood, is enshrined in the Grand Cathedral. Also, the upper layers of the Cathedral Ward are where the leaders of the Old Church reside. Seek the salvation of blood, and if you are permitted, I believe you should visit the area. Now, with that as an overview, let's go into some more of the specifics about why this is a tricky bit of dialogue to translate. First, and probably most notable, is the phrase that I've literally translated as the salvation of blood, and which the official version has as blood healing. 
The Japanese version, chi no skui, is what's currently on the screen. Of that phrase, the second part, skui, is the one that's in question here. My Japanese Daijisen dictionary gives me three different definitions for this word. The first can refer to help or aid. The second refers to things that provide a sense of comfort or peace of mind. And the third is salvation in a religious sense. Given the setting of Bloodborne and the context of talking about the healing church, I feel like this final meaning is perhaps the most interesting. As for the official translation of blood healing, I feel like some interpretation work is being done here. The help that the blood in question provides is in healing. You can see this even in the name of the healing church. So in one sense, it's not that much of a jump to go from seek the salvation of blood to seek blood healing. Although I do feel like you lose some of the immediate associations that you would get with religion had they kept the word salvation. And actually, this potential connection to religion is something that the next point I wanted to talk about shares as well. The term in question here is seitai, and it literally translates to holy body. It's actually hard to get even more literal than that. The first character means holy, and the second one means body. But anyway, the point that I wanted to bring up here was that this term has a very religious sense to it as well. Recall, for instance, that the term seitai hairyo is the Japanese word for communion. Literally, it's a phrase that means something like the humble reception of the holy body. So in a Christian context, the word seitai can be used to refer to the body of Christ. And in that light, I feel like the official translation of holy medium does a pretty good job here. The idea is that this is something holy, which acts as a source for and a means to transmit the blood that heals or saves others. On the other hand, there's a sense in which moving away from the actual term body obscures part of the meaning that I think is intended here. We'll have to come back and talk more about that point a little bit later though. Instead, and actually on a somewhat related note, I'd like to talk about the term that's being translated as venerated. The original Japanese, which is currently being displayed on the screen, is Matsuru. The tricky thing about this word is that it can mean both to worship and to enshrine. And here I think the use of the term venerate is about as good of a solution as there is. Because, at least in my own estimation, it's one of the few words that you can use that does kind of work in both situations. You can venerate someone by putting up a statue to them or enshrining them, or you can venerate someone by actively worshipping or praising them. And I think the use of this term really helps to maintain the ambiguity of the original Japanese. Again though, we're missing some of the information we need to fully discuss this topic, so we'll come back to this conversation later. This brings us to one last thing I thought was worth mentioning about this dialogue. At the end of Alfred's first line, he calls the church the fountainhead of blood healing. In Japanese, the term in question is ninaite, and in its more literal sense, it refers to someone who bears some kind of burden, oftentimes the burden of responsibility. The relevant definition in my Japanese dictionary is someone who supports and or advances something of central importance. And the reason I think the use of the word fountainhead here is so interesting is the way that it implies the healing church is the source of blood healing. There's a sense in which the two concepts overlap, and another sense in which I feel like they're a little bit different. Without the healing church, would there be no blood healing at all, or would there simply be less of it because it lost its primary support? Also, how much does Alfred really know about this, and is he hiding anything? In the end, I think that Fountainhead is a good translation here, but I'm fascinated by the difference. But now on to this lore note. The red moon hangs low, and beasts rule the streets. Are we left no other choice than to burn it all to cinders? Once again, there's a little bit more to the Japanese here. Let's do another comparison. The red moon is close, and this town is filled with beasts. There's no end to them. Is it too late to do anything? Is burning it all down our only option? As you can see, the literal Japanese is a little bit longer. But the real reason I wanted to point this out was to show that there's actually not a substantive difference between the two versions. The information that you get out of the Japanese is that there's a red moon, it seems to be nearby, the town is overrun with beasts, it's too late to try anything to save them, and regrettably the only choice seems to be to burn down the entire town. The information that you get out of the official English translation is exactly the same. I'm not sure how much of an influence character limitations had on this more concise version of the information in question, but I do think that this is well done. 
Especially since, even though it's shorter, I feel like the official version does a better job than the more literal one I just gave of making you feel the true regret inherent in the situation. And with that, we've reached the end of another episode. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, I'd love to hear them. Thanks for watching, everyone.